Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar where we are going to unpack all of the key strategy and the details involved in the Ultimate Back to School Marketing Kit. So without further ado, my name is JP Hunt and I'll be your presenter today. Let's start off with a quick agenda. Here are the things that we're going to cover in today's class. First, we're going to start with the numbers and the key drivers to give you context into what the Back to School Marketing Opportunity represents. Then we're going to unpack the back to school framework. There's kind of a new way, a new outlook, a new paradigm shift as it relates to thinking about back to school sales and sales opportunities. We're going to talk about really four pillars that make up the back to school marketing kit, which is a very simple yet uh, powerful revenue generating opportunity, which is an advertising program for local businesses in your community. Then we'll be talking about how to deploy fundraising, which is in need now more than ever. We'll talk about a simple outlook on launching a campus ambassador program. There's tremendous opportunity here. And we're going to end with how to look at offering bundles to your customers to monetize to the best possible uh, potential. So that said, let's now get into the numbers. Obviously, the numbers are uh, motivators and you know, gives us context into the opportunity. So here's the scoop. There are going to be 76.1 million students that are going to head back to school this back to school season. And that you know, encompasses, of course, primary, high school and uh, collegiate. Now, that number is just the student body that does not represent families, uh, that doesn't represent staff and you know, athletic trainers and all the other folks that are members of the you know, sort of school community at large. So here we have the primary target market, which is the students. But I want you to, and I'm going to continue to encourage you to think about unlocking other sales opportunities and potential through those that are also associated to a community. So let's kind of make some progress here. And I want to talk about why back to school is different. And it seems like everything's different sort of in a post-COVID you know, economy, right? So the reality is I can speak from a little bit of experience here because I have four children, all of which are in school. Uh, the reality is there's massive pent up demand. So as students and staff and schools had to pivot to remote schooling, you know, there's just a big pent up demand and parents are really excited to get kids back to school to be with their peers and to get all the benefit from you know, socialization at school and sports and you know, clubs and all the camaraderie that, that's, that I think we normally have forsaken, but we now really appreciate, again, in sort of a post-COVID environment. So even the most conservative state, which which happened to be New York, you know, they've announced they are returning and, uh, you know, virtual schooling is, is going to be put on moratorium. So the reality is this year back to school is going to look a lot different than, you know, sort of the COVID era. And I think now there's a new appreciation for back to school and we're not forsaking normalcy. Right. So return to normalcy, pent up demand. People are excited. Uh, they're enthusiastic. Now we get to tap into that uh, to definitely magnify the sales opportunities that are available to us. So before we get underway, I just want to call something out that I think is probably the most important thing to consider as we you know, talk about back to school strategy. And really, if you have the right strategy, you have the right technology, that's most of the battle, right? But there is something to be said about sort of a first to market advantage. And here's an example of an Inksoft customer, Gandhi Inc. They began promoting back to school all the way back in uh, on May 7th. And so here's a, an Instagram uh, promotion they had run to, to start to promote back to school. And the caption reads, the books may be closing soon on this school year, but we are already planning ahead. Place your order now and we'll pre-book to ship at the beginning of next school year. No money up front. So the reality is, you know, take a lesson from Gandhi Inc. The cliche goes, early bird gets the worm. So the one thing to keep front of mind, top of mind with all sales opportunities, but back to school in particular, is you must get proactive and you must go to market early. And look at what sort of corporate America and retail has done, right? Remember, it used to be a month or two before holidays, we'd start to see holiday content. But now it gets it, every year it gets earlier and earlier. So consumers are groomed to begin thinking about holiday shopping well in advance of the holidays, right? So let's take a, a lesson and be proactive and beat our competition. So let's get into the framework. I mentioned there is a framework that's going to be instructive and that's going to guide us and give us context. And really, it's simple. It's kind of three part switch, sell and appeal. 
And so the one thing that we want to advocate for beyond being proactive and being early, we want to sort of redefine what it means to, to think about back to school cells. And most folks, if we were to survey in our industry, would think of back to school, something that happens in August, I get to ride that wave for 30 or 45 days and then it's over. So here's the paradigm shift that we're going to you know, sort of instruct is start to think about back to school as, as something that begins in August, but ends with graduation. So it's a 10 month long opportunity to sell and there's different ways to look at sales, right? And we'll unpack more of that as we go through our class today. Now here's one sort of the second part to consider here is when we think about selling, we need to think about you know addressing the needs of all the different audiences. We've talked about student body is the most obvious, you know, the target audience. But then think about again school administration and staff, athletic staff, parents, people in the community that are enthusiastic about supporting education and, and the school in their area, right? So we must consider addressing seasonal needs and clubs and sports and teams and events and all the, the milestones that happen throughout that 10 month sales period. Now, the last thing we want to think about as we talk about different audiences and in terms of monetizing all potential here is, you know, you know think about addressing, uh, you know, product, you know, merchandising and, and graphical theme and messaging for all the different types of consumers, right? So students, parents, you know, they're going to have different preferences, right? But the more sort of time you spend thinking about, well, who are the potential consumers of this audience? And do I have products and graphical themes that align with their needs, their desires, uh, their preferences? You're going to make the most of your sales opportunities. So switch, sell, and appeal is the mindset we're going to use as we're approaching, you know, sort of back to school and school sales in general. So I want to reinforce this notion of ongoing demand and opportunity. Again, this is back to this notion of switch the mindset. Back to school sales uh, begin or commence again in August, but it concludes with December. And as you can see from Gandhi Inc., they're right back at it early May by promoting, hey, you know, proactively and early that back to school is forthcoming. Let's get in preparation, right? So with that said, that is uh, sort of the framework. So let's now move into the four pillars of the back to school marketing kit. So the very first concept here is developing an advertising program. So we kind of set up the context and the sort of the, the background here. So imagine you as the apparel decorator, promotional product distributor, the company that's selling branded merchandise, and you're doing it you know, for schools and, and student body. Imagine going to local businesses in your area and offering them a sponsorship marketing and advertising opportunity that's low cost, that's approachable. And many businesses are starved for new ways to market, right? And be in front of consumers in their local community. So every, near every high school, there's different merchants and vendors, whether it be the diner or, you know, the, the restaurant that offers, you know, the student body uh, uh, lunch specials. And they, you know, really rely on the student body uh, as, a, as a key consumer. So imagine tapping into those groups and offering them a marketing opportunity where they have placement, they're getting visibility, they're creating awareness and interest in their business within that school community. So what you can do is you can launch an online store using Inksoft and there you can do, as you can see on screen, you can do a really simple banner or hero space image, thanking sponsors, you can position their logos using custom content, you can call out a key little uh, information about that business, maybe they wanna promote their lunch special uh, for students using a coupon code so they can track the performance. But the reality is, you know, if you go to a small local business and say, hey, we're gonna give you four social media message, uh, mentions as a thanking our sponsor, you're going to be included in four different emails uh, that will go out. You'll, you'll have presence on the Spiritware fundraising store that we're launching. Uh, we're also going to get local press coverage on the fundraising store. That's an awful lot of value. That's an awful lot of impressions. It's goodwill generation. So you're creating a tremendous amount of opportunity for that local business. Now, there's three ways to look at this advertising program. There's three sort of ways to conduct and sort of manage the, the revenue that you can produce from selling ads. So let's assume in the example we have on the screen, we sold three $500 ads. And you can think about doing you know, a platinum placement that maybe is more and you can do gold. So you have different tiers. There's a lot of ways to think about this. Use you know, your innovation, be creative here. But nonetheless, let's say that we're generating revenue by selling three sponsorships. They're $500 each, $1,500 raised, right? There's three outlooks here. Number one, the pure profit motivation. You can retain all of that revenue and keep that as pure profit. And you can use that as a way to offset all of your cost and overhead to execute this fundraising spiritware store that you're putting on, right? 
and you want to be transparent and create awareness with maybe the principal or the PTO or whoever the decision maker is, this is your approach. And make sure that you have commitment and buy-in and, and there's no challenges there. Now, the next contemplation is maybe a revenue share outlook where you do a 50-50 rev share. So you give half of the fundraising monies, or excuse me, the sponsorship monies to the, the school as a fundraising contribution. Or maybe you, uh, and then you keep the balance of so the 50% as a way to, again, offset your overhead. The third contemplation is the pay it forward or pass forward, which is giving 100% of the sponsorship monies raised back to the organization as an additional fundraising mechanism. So there's no one right answer. You could deploy this situationally, depending on which uh, client you're dealing with. Uh, maybe we're all at different options. Um, so a lot of flexibility, but in summary, you're creating value for local businesses that need marketing uplift and they wanna reach student body, and they wanna reach people in the sort of the school community. Um, so you're helping them promote themselves, but you're also generating revenue that can be, of course, attributed three different ways as we've just described. Now, the next consideration is fundraising. Now, fundraising is nothing new, right? We've been talking about fundraising for ages. It's been a marquee feature of Vingsoft platform where you can launch an online fundraising store, a lot of configuration and possibilities with fundraising. But here is a new outlook. In fact, we did a recent blog post talking about the fundraising demand has never been higher. So think about so many nonprofits and organizations have been off their traditional fundraising cadence. They had to lay off staff during the COVID era because they were off their fundraising cycle, right? They couldn't do live galas and silent auctions and live events. Um, so with that said, you know, organizations need you now more than ever to accelerate and catch up on the deficiency they have in fundraising because they're missing staff. And again, their traditional fundraising outlets and channels were sort of on hi hiatus during COVID. So you can now leverage your fundraising powers to another degree by going to school and school administration and explaining your fundraising potential and capabilities. So there's a lot of positioning here. A, you can drive spirit and student morale by offering branded merchandise, but you can also give a percentage of all the proceeds back to the organization. That's tremendously valuable. And, you know, I mentioned I have four children in school and our uh, children's school, of course, always is, they're always doing fundraising. And their fundraising strategy was definitely old school, right? Hey, if we meet our fundraising goal, we're going to do an ice cream social. So that doesn't provide a tremendous amount of value. It's hard to get students excited. I mean, of course, students love ice cream. But uh, nonetheless, you know, this provides a different context to get school staff, um, organizers way more involved in fundraising. So with that said, you know, uh, schools will have, you know, constant fundraising needs and demands. They always have. But that's now accelerated post-COVID. And the other way to view fundraising is sort of macro and micro, right? So macro would be global, like, you know, the school needs to raise money. They're going to launch a year-long fundraising campaign using an online store selling branded merchandise, right? The other way to view this is micro. Think about all the underserved groups and clubs. You know, there is the chess club. There is the swim and dive club uh, or small teams, right? They have fundraising needs. Uh, you know, can you support them? And so if you take a lot of these smaller opportunities and you aggregate them together at the end of the year, this is going to make a big uh, sort of tilt in revenue. So you're maximizing all sales opportunity potential, not just the one major. And that's a great way for you to differentiate and to, to build a stronger relationship with your customers because you're serving you know, their macro needs, but you're also serving all the different teams and clubs and organizations. And that just builds a more meaningful, more fruitful, and more long-term relationship with that particular school. Now let's move on to the Campus Ambassador Program. This is something I think really exciting and, and sort of underutilized. And we're gonna take a page out of the playbook from those apparel decorators, promotional product distributors that are really focused on collegiate. So think about Greek life and sorority and fraternity, um, you know, co collegiate, um, you know, again, groups, uh, clubs, campus events. So oftentimes a lot of businesses in our space that are focused on collegiate, they'll develop campus ambassadors, campus reps. So they'll effectively hire students to be advocates, to be effectively sales reps, to be promoters, to be influencers, to effectively, you know, generate the most possible sales, right? Through tapping into their social networks and their presence on campus. So the concept here is you're gonna activate campus ambassadors to advocate on your behalf, promote online stores, promote Spiritwear fundraising programs, to be a real authentic and genuine voice on campus. Now, there's a few different outlooks here. 
Number one, you can contemplate creating an internship program. I can assure you that internships are not just for college students. In fact, parents and college advisors and college prep, you know, they're trying to help students, you know, build up their resumes and their experience um, to differentiate on, you know, college applications. So I, as a graduating high school student, if I have a, a, an internship and I can demonstrate and speak to maybe that in my essay, you know, I'm much more likely to be differentiated against those other students that are applying. So high school internships are a thing. Also think about so many high schools have high school entrepreneur clubs. So think about tapping into potentially the, the teacher or the administration involved in, in that particular club and seeing if you can offer up a way to participate with that high school entrepreneurship club by you know, teaching them how to market uh, and take a, a program and deliver it. You know, and they're the representatives of that. So they can participate from ideas. Um, you can give some structure and give some guidance, but ultimately you're going to have a sort of a tapped in uh, inbuilt group that can, can deliver on, upon that. Now, here's a few other things to think about. You know, as you're developing these campus ambassadors, there is a bit of sort of criteria here. And, and the criteria is social maven. So social maven is somebody that's seen in their community as somebody that is a trusted source of information. So they're knowledgeable, they tend to have a lot of insights, and then they tend to spread those insights, right? So we all know these people on social media that tend to be popular, they're influential, and they're influential because again, they tend to have good insights or key information. So that said, think about you know, the high school student body. Think about you know, the, the captain on the, the football team. You know, think about prom queen, uh, prom king, you know, just folks uh, on campus that have a presence and they're again as seen as socially popular, socially plugged in. These are the right campus ambassadors that again can advocate because they have influence. They're probably highly followed on TikTok and on their social media channels. So they're the perfect, you know, student body to tap into to have them as your advocates promoting online stores and different spirit wear. Even think about doing programs like merch drops. You think if they're the model and they can model the different products that are available on the store, that's a great way to showcase the products in context and have somebody that can advocate and vouch for the fashion or the style or the fit, the quality. So you can just see how there's so much potential here and having a sales force that's organic, on campus, trusted, and socially connected. Now the third, or excuse me, the final contemplation here is Think about gamifying this you know, program. So you could do a contest. Hey, the student that generates the most revenue is going to receive uh, AirPods or even making it a commissionable paid internship program. Or maybe it's a way to raise funds for the high school entrepreneur club. So there's a lot of ways to use like promo codes or coupons in the Inksoft platform to track which student is generating the most revenue. And again, there's a lot of ways to gamify that with a gift or a contest or again, give monies back to the school uh, to enhance fundraising or to support a particular club or group. A lot of potential here. We've seen this play out with Collegiate. This is something that's tried, true, and, and sort of tested. Now it's deploying it on high school campuses. So let's move along to the classic bundle. I think this is a tremendous way to increase your average revenue per shopper or per customer. And so rather than selling a singular t-shirt, you know, this is your way to sell a bundle of products and go from a, what could be a, a $15 transaction to a $70 transaction. So the reality here is with a bundle, what we're trying to do is tap into monetizing even more from a typical customer. And so here's the, the sort of the way to look at this. Imagine if you have an online, you know, back to school store and you have a la carte products, but then you also have bundles where hey, you can get the everyday t-shirt bundle, which includes five shirts. Each shirt is totally different and distinct. And it's a way to, to have a garment that you could wear every single day to show your, your, your child's school spirit and, and be connected with their, their, their school. And then at the same time, you're solving a problem for the parent. And again, for the third, fourth time, I'm gonna mention that I have four kids. Um, fortunately, my children go to a charter school where there's uniforms. So we don't have to contend any longer with the battle of what to wear and being late because uh, Charlotte can't figure out what she wants to wear for the day, right? This might resonate with some of you that are uh, parents. So with that said, imagine as a parent, if the proposition is your child will have a t-shirt they can wear you know, once uh, per day per week, and you'll have to think about dirty laundry or fighting about what to wear to school. The other way to look at this is maybe an essential bundle. 
Who doesn't want a t-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and a hoodie that gives you context and products to wear all year round or through that 10 year period? Um, think about senior year bundles, you know, commemorating and celebrating the, an important milestone, which is senior year as students transition from high school to college. This is a really important time in, in a student's life, but also with parents. So celebrating that, and in particular, as, as you know, life was disrupted during COVID, again, parents have this front of mind. We were robbed last year of a, of a proper school year, so we really want to go full in on our children's experience you know, this year. So think about a senior bundle where you have really cool exclusive products meant for the seniors that give different graphical trends and themes to really let them commemorate their, their final milestone in, in their high school experience. And really what these bundles tend to do is you can tap into something really important that's happening now with consumers, which is value conscious, value oriented. So consumers are focused on quality, they're focused on cost savings. So if you can position these bundles in a way where when you purchase a bundle, you're saving, and then you're getting extra value, like the, the value I just mentioned, uh, your, your senior will have an amazing way to commemorate their final year in high school. Your child will have a garment they can wear every single day and not have to think about or fuss with what to wear. So there's a lot of ways to position this from a cost savings plus an added value to parent and to consumer. So certainly think about logical curated collections of products that make sense. You'll consider graphical themes and trends that you know, showcase variability. Think about mixing products in a way that just adds and enhances uh, the proposition and the bundle itself. A lot of creative ways to approach this. You can even think about tethering a freemium. You know, purchase a bundle, get free sticker or get free, you know, low cost product that doesn't uh, you know, have a, a tremendous impact, but is still high perceived value. You know, there's other ways to bring extra value to a bundle like the one I gave you, which is an example I just gave you, which is a freemium. All right, so let's now, now that we've kind of unpacked the four pillars to think about, you can tap into one or all four to get maximum value, but I wanna bring context and bring you back to the ultimate back to school marketing kit. This is what started this all, right? So I'll draw your attention to the ultimate back to school marketing kit in the event that you have not tapped into this. So we started inventing, we invented rather, the very first marketing kit right as COVID became a thing. We realized we need to turn our attention not just from offering great technology, but we need to turn our internal resources, our marketing team. We have an amazing you know, copyright team that has, you know, in particular, master degree, professional storyteller. Um, we turned our marketing team loose on effectively almost behaving like we're your in-house marketing team. So what we've done with these marketing kits, in short, is we've begun to write marketing copy for social media, for email marketing, calls to action to put on your Inksoft powered online stores, different voices and narratives. So for example, the Back to School Marketing Kit, we give you turnkey marketing copy that you can just copy and deploy, or you can copy and personalize to a degree. And you have a framework that you can go out and promote. Hey, local business, we have this really great um, advertising program that's gonna let you, you know, create awareness and be in front of the student body. Here's the details. So using these marketing kits, you can move the needle. There's no excuse to getting out in your market because you have professionally written marketing messaging to create awareness and to start promoting your back to school chops and capabilities for fundraising, for all the things we've just talked about. So I'm gonna show you where you can download and tap into these in just a moment's time. But what I wanna do is kind of wrap up the things we've talked about, just reinforce the key concepts here. And there's really three buckets of concepts. The, the reality is there's a big opportunity with back to school and back to school again needs to be viewed as a 10 month program that starts with back to school and ends with graduation and then we rinse and repeat. There's 76.1 million students uh, at the collegiate level down to the primary uh, and that's just students. Think about if you were to take parents, staff, uh, all the other participants that that is a uh, order of magnitude even greater, right? Big, big opportunity. We're just talking about tapping into a minuscule fraction to get huge value. The other thing is there's pent up demand. You know, back to school sales have kind of been just a regular mainstay, nothing innovative, same programs year over year. The difference is consumers now uh, aren't forsaking or taking for granted the things that we've normally forsaken, right? So getting disrupted, speaking from a parent perspective, You've seen the impact it had on, 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 on my children. Going back to school, we're excited about it. You know, there's a ton of enthusiasm with the school administration and staff and students alike to get back with their peers, to be back in clubs and groups, to be stimulated. 
So that said, there's big untapped pent up demand that you get to tap into. And we've seen this demand play out, right? Look at you know, family, vacation, family vacations, uh, family reunions, friendcations, summer camps. These are all, uh, you know, in this period, uh, sort of reaching records because there's been so much delayed pent up demand. Now people are tapping into it fully. Now, the other co contemplation here is ongoing campaign mindset. Switch, sell, and appeal. Switch your mindset and see back to school as something that is the start. You also, in terms of sell, ask the question, what are the needs here? How do I address all those needs? And how can I appeal to all the different consumers and their preferences? The next consideration is you know, rinse and repeat. See this as a cycle, just like you saw with Gandhi Inc., right? We bring... Uh, you know, graduation to a conclusion, we immediately then pivot with promoting back to school all over again, getting in preparation, getting in position. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is, you know, this notion of unlocking all the potential and all the value with back to school, a local business advertising program, three different ways to leverage and monetize that opportunity. Fundraising is more important now than ever for not only schools, but for all potential clients, right? Nonprofits, other organizations in your community. Campus ambassador program, take a page out of the playbook of businesses that are, have been focused and, and uh, preoccupied with selling it in the collegiate market. Campus ambassador program is a, a, a massive sales force um, that you can tap into and create extra value. The other consideration, the final consideration is bundling. How can you provide cost savings, solve potential problems, and present you know, a, a more compelling presentation. And at the end state, you know, you're generating more revenue. Your average checkout, average transaction is greater. So you're maximizing each individual transaction and monetizing that to the fullest possible extent. All right, so in conclusion here, it's one thing to have a strategy. It's one thing to have marketing copy and content like we're providing. But unless you have the right technology, you, know, you can't close the gap, right? And in fact, this is something in the business world called implementation gap. It's one thing to have a great idea and great strategy and be really excited and have the right intentions. But then oftentimes there's implementation gap because, hey, we don't have the right capabilities or technology to actually go to market and do the thing the strategy mandates. So here I just want to advocate for Inksoft. And of course, we're slightly biased, but we have 11 years of experience in building an e-commerce platform that's really been built for the needs of businesses that sell branded merchandise. So with Inksoft, you're going to have the right technology to go to market and leverage not only the, the back to school marketing kit, but all of the branded merchandise sales opportunities that are available to today's businesses. And of course, a lot of things have changed, you know, inventory and uh, drop ship and order fulfillment programs. There's so many reasons to leverage tech to be efficient, to be effective and to serve customers better than your competition. Moreover, you know, the new challenge we're seeing now is, you know, Inksoft customers are now really busy. Sales are flowing, but the challenge with labor shortages and of course inventory and, uh, you know, sort of the supply chain disruption, you know, a lot of technology can solve for a lot of those challenges in terms of being more productive and cost savings, more efficiencies. So in summary here, you know, the strategy we've presented requires online stores and Inksoft has the industry's best online stores from a few different perspectives. It's the fastest way to create professional mobile responsive stores and it's infinitely flexible. So you can launch pretty much any group sales opportunity, whether it be for, you know, uh, back to office programs, you know, uh, inventory management programs, all the programs you can think of, Inksoft is optimized to support. Now, the other consideration is we have a tremendous degree of experience and tools and features to support fundraising programs and that's baked right into the Inksoft online store framework. The, the third and final way to sort of view and judge technology is does it solve all the problems, not just specific problems? So in particular, there's a lot of online store solutions that help you to sell, but then you have to figure out how to get that data into a production management system, how to manage you know, purchasing and receiving, production, order handling, all of that technology is inbuilt into Inksoft. So once you do generate orders, you have a very simple series of tools and workspaces to manage orders, production, purchasing, receiving, customer management. Um, so in terms of scalability, when you have one single platform that you can rely on that's centralized, integrated, ma made to work together, you're going to have the best efficiencies, which means you can scale. You can build more stores because you have those efficiencies to tap into. 
So with that said, let me draw your final attention in terms of where you can navigate and find that back to school marketing kit. So let's now head over to Ingsoft.com where I'll show you where to get uh, access to not only the back to school marketing kit, but all the marketing kits that we have available. Okay, so here we are at Ingsoft.com. What you'll do to find marketing kits is you're gonna click on resources and there you can click on marketing kits. And that's where you're gonna find all of the marketing kits we've constructed. We're gonna to continue to release these every single month. We have a really exciting one coming up in July. Um, but nonetheless, we're, we're even have plans to enhance these to go from just marketing copy to provide more resources to help you to be more successful. So when you click on a marketing kit, at the very top, you'll have the ability to register for the marketing kit. And it's a matter of just filling out a form. You're gonna get immediate access We'll even email you a copy to make sure that you have it in your inbox. But there you'll be able to tap into that marketing kit to then take full advantage of it. So that's a very powerful way for you to get uplift from all these different sales and marketing strategies, ways to go to market by tapping into Ingsoft marketing kits. Now, in the event that you have any questions, you want to know more about the Ingsoft platform, my advice to you is take a tour with an Ingsoft expert. We have an amazing team of industry experts. Uh, that know you know decoration, they know imprint, they know all the challenges. They also know all the opportunities that are before you and they can connect you and really show how the Ingsoft technology has been built in a way to help you optimize your business and your sales potential. Well, thanks for tuning in to today's online class and we certainly look forward to our next marketing kit together and our next webinar together.